we'll dive into some of the specific uh, of um, the algorithms used to perform prime path testing. Those in the room will recall that the motivation for prime path testing lies in the fact that uh, we have a subsumption hierarchy associated with testing methods. Some testing methods subsume others in the sense that A subsumes B. If we conduct A, we've automatically covered B. Okay? Um, so, for example, edge coverage subsumes node coverage. So if we achieve edge coverage, we can rest assured that all nodes have been reached. Okay? Um, and the specific motivations for this lecture reflect the fact that prime path coverage is a level of coverage which is very strong. It includes edge and node coverage. Um, it subsumes those. So it achieves those automatically as a side effect. But something much stronger yet, something that actually subsumes edge pair. Complete round trip coverage, all deaf use path coverage, and a set of others. So it's a very strong technique. It's notable that whilst it's shown as being subsumed by complete path coverage, there's an important difference between the two in a practical level. Complete path coverage is, is not in general possible because uh, in, in general, the number of paths could be unlimited. Think about for a read eval print system. For example, something that might serve as the login on a string lock page. Um, uh, where it can be invoked any number of different times. And, and therefore, we can't bound the number of, of times we could loop around to it. One hopes, but in, in the Linux world, one is still left hoping that at least one of those times will work. Okay, you folks were. <laughs> that, that, you're not aware of that. The, the whole problem that Greg came to fix with keyboard needed was that the screen lock page would not recognize my keyboard. It, was, it did not have keyboard focus. <laughs> and uh, he suggested, as the solution for this for future occasions, where I stand before a conference of thousands to give my keynote speech, he suggested I bring along an extra keyboard. Friends <laughs> in my pocket. And he did note that an early keyboard um, for Windows required just three keys. Control, Alt, Delete. <laughs> <laughs> so um, prime path coverage uh, is a level of coverage that is achievable in contrast to complete coverage, complete path coverage. Um, and yet it, it has great strength associated with it. I want to bring you back to this eminently examinable point that when we conduct coverage testing, be it path or indeed logic coverage, for any of the techniques, the fundamental modus operandi, the fundamental technique we use is we identify the set of things we need to cover, be it nodes, edges, prime paths. So we identify them, we enumerate them, we, we find out the, the list of them. We develop a set of abstract scenarios, paths going from start to finish, that we want to cover. And it's only then, in the third step, that we do what? We come up with, yes, inputs, specific inputs that will exercise those paths and yield, indeed. I believe that came from the mouth of Mason. Yeah. Um, from, uh, there are a set of paths that, uh, or, excuse me, they, they return certain outputs. They're going to return certain outputs each time. So inputs and outputs need to be coupled there, right? Um, okay, so I want to talk about prime paths, and this will require some um, notions associated with uh, that are more conceptual. Okay, um, I'm going to introduce two concepts here that are tightly related, and uh, I feel neglectful always privileging one side of the board than the other, but uh, I do know that we have a disproportionate number of people sitting over here on, 
on this side. Um, and uh, therefore, I'll, I'll put both these definitions, uh, illustrations of them here. One is a simple path, okay? We're dealing in this sphere with graphs. Um, we've been dealing with, you know, particular graphs, be they graphs within code, low-level code, things like, you know, a, um, a set of base, where the nodes are things like basic blocks within a, an algorithm basic block being a set of code that's either executed fully or not at all. It's, it's kind of a, there's no branches within it. Um, but we're dealing with graphs. It could be at this level, or it could be graphs conceptually at the level of high-level system function for a process or, or indeed for a, you know, stages of a system, right? Uh, in any case, we're dealing with graphs here. And these graphs, uh, are associated with nodes and edges, okay? A simple path is a path through that graph that either has no cycles at all or alternatively has the start and the end node be the same but otherwise no, no cycles. So it, uh, it may be Maybe a path where there's no repeated nodes, A, B, and C. But it could also be a path uh, such as A goes to B and B back to A. That's also a legitimate, um, legitimate simple path, A, B, A. Last and first node are the same. Okay? Yes, Jason? Um, I noticed you didn't plug in your microphone, and I don't know if that matters. No, I, I did so advisedly. Um, I, I'm grateful for your attention to that, but um, I navigate not just one instance of computational dysfunction, but indeed <laughs> a pair of them today. And uh, I discovered I discovered uh, some cautionary notes about my Dalek microphone. Oh, no. And as 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 attractive it is, I decided to forego its. The, the unalloyed pleasure of its uh, presence here, um, in preference for not exterminating the, uh, the, the sound. Okay. So we, we deal today without the microphone, and indeed without the commanding presence, the dialogue. Oh. <laughs> for whom that, <laughs> those in the room for whom that's a meaningful utterance. Okay, so um, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate you pointing this out. Um, so a simple path is a path through this graph where we either have no cycles or where the first and the last, um, the last elements of the path can be uh, the same and that's it. No other repetitions, okay? Um, so if we were to, for example, have a path uh, of, of this sort, um, maybe it's A, B, C, and maybe we'll have a path here. Um, uh, you know, a sort of side path might represent, what might this represent, anyone? Might represent a loop, so we start at A, we can come down here and either we can continue on directly to C, or we can we can go and, and from B, we can go around the loop any number of different times in general, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is a graph. Represents that situation perhaps at a low level. Maybe it represents the fact that we have a wizard that we can go around in multiple times before completing at a high UI level. Okay, I'd like you to enumerate some simple paths for me. In fact, I would challenge you to enumerate all simple paths. Take into account what I've said and what I haven't said. So um, recognizing the fact that we'll be depending more on the board for the moment, and less so on the on the slides, I'll, I'll uh, add to the elimination. Okay, so can we start to enumerate some simple paths here? Anyone? Again, a simple path is a path path within this graph where it either has no repetition 
or where, at most, the first and the last note can be repeated. Uh, so Mason, yeah. Okay, so so I'm going to, I'll write this down here. <clears throat> I'm gonna order my paths in a certain way, but but I, I really admire you speaking up about this. So A, B, and then? Oh, A, B, D, E, D, E, C. A, B, D, E, well it, and then E to B. Okay, E to B, yeah, E to B, okay. But there's a problem, isn't there, Houston? We have a problem? What's the problem? Because B is repeated here, but it's repeated in a way it's not it's not the allowed exception where it's the first and the last, right? So actually, this is not, and I'm grateful to you bringing this forward, because it's actually not a legitimate simple path. Now, Mason was aspiring <clears throat> in a direction that I think he'll be glad to know has an unnecessary constraint. A simple path doesn't have to start at the start. It could start anywhere. So give me a simple path based on this Masonian idea. Yes? So there's a kind of two. There's A to B to C, and then there's a B to D to E. OK, so good. B again. Good. I'm getting some, some great ideas here. And I'm going to actually I'm going to organize them spatially in the following way. I'm going to organize them by their length. And I want you to think. what. Why to do so? Length one, length two, length three. I heard a, a length three here, which was A, and I'm just going to write, just write them next to each other, okay? So A, B, C, okay? Um, there's even a song about that one. Um, and then what's another one? Uh, B, D, D, B. Okay, so that's a length four. B, D, E, B. I love it. Okay, you notice one and two remain yet unexplored. Can we start to fill some of those in? Remember, a path doesn't have to have edges. I'll give you a hint there. So, so a path will have to be a legitimate following of one arrow to the next. The arrows have to compose. But, but, um, it doesn't mean you have to go over an arrow. So, Matt, is that giving you an idea? C. Yeah, just C. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put it down here. C, after like two previous entries. What are the, <laughs> what are the others? A. A. And B. B. Is there something under here? D. Yeah, D. D. And E. What a fine set of suggestions. Good. Okay, how about lengths of past two? A, so these are these are simple paths, yeah. A B, good. B D, yeah. D E, E B, and B C, good. Um, so those are all simple paths. There's, there's no repetition at all on them, um, and they're legitimate paths through the system. They, they don't happen to start at the start, nor do they, most of them, not all of them start at the start, not all of them end at the end, but um, Lewis Carroll aside, they're perfectly legitimate paths. Okay? Um, <clears throat> good. Are these a complete listing of, 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 the, of the paths uh, that are of length two? They are. They are. They happen to exhibit isomorphism with the with the edges here. Um, so uh, yeah, it, absolutely. Um, okay. How about length three? Can we enumerate all length three paths? A B D. Okay. Good. A B D is indeed a path of great importance, particularly in doctoral work. You know what it stands for? All that dissertation. Um, so that's a, an unfortunate acronym you'll hear, hear from doctoral students around. Uh, I'm ABD. Um, okay, uh, so ABD, how about another one? 
Sorry? BDE. BDE. Excellent. Yes. Next. Sorry? DEB. DEB. Okay, excellent. Uh, and uh, more? EBC. EBC. I sense a method to your explorations, and I admire your systematicity. Um, so, so that's good. EBC, yeah. Um, any others we're still missing? EBC. Sorry? EBC. Yes. Yes. And who made that, that utterance? Good job, Camille. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so can we can we build on that um, that notion any further? Mm, so we, we could have gone like that. Do we have a yes, we have a BDE. Are there any others missing? I think that's a full, full list right there. Um, and one might argue there's an isomorphism to pairs, successive pairs of edges. Uh, but I won't uh, dwell on that at the moment. OK, um, <clears throat> so length four. Uh, any others of length four? D, E, B, C. D, E, B, C. Good. D, E, B, C. Yeah, yeah. There's no repetition. Okay, others. A B A B D E. Good. Yes. Others. A B D E. Sorry. A B A B. How about another one? B D E B. B D E B. Yeah. Oh wait, we already have that. But there's something. Well, okay. Pay attention to this loop. This loop has a couple of starting points. We have it starting at B. We have it starting at D. Are we missing one? E B D E. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, any others? D E B D. Sorry? Uh, D E B D. D E B D. Yes. Um, good. D E B D. Yes. Um, good. Um, any others we're missing? I think that's that's it. Okay. Um, are there any plank five? A A B D E. C. Okay, but you have the only way you can get to C is through B. And why is that a problem? Because it repeats something that was not at the start, right? Yeah. And anywhere we go, we're either going to run out of room by one of two ways. One way we could run out of room is we come back to a, to a starting point, that, oh, sorry, to, a, to a, a, a loop point where we've, we've been there before, not at the start, right? So even if you start at B, or you start at D, or start at E, you're going to get back to that. Or you run out of room by going to the end, right? And you can't go any further. So, so we have a, a challenge here in terms of how long they can be. It's something of length 5 that you might think A, B, D, E, B, C um, is, is not going to be uh, viable to, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, like five. It runs into trouble because of the repetition about B. Right? Okay, so there's limits here, and the things that limit it are cycles or extension. We, we, we come to the end. 
And those are exactly the two constraints that we'll be dealing with in the algorithm. Okay? Um, so these are all simple paths, ladies and gentlemen. And you've done an admirable job in enumerating. Um, I want to build on this notion of a simple path with the notion of a prime path. Okay? A prime path is a simple path with a particular distinguishing characteristic. It's a simple path that's not contained as a subpart of any other simple path. So it's not a substring, as it were, any other simple path. Um, so which of these is a prime path? Anyone? So Matt. Anything under four. Sorry? Anything under four. Okay, anything under four is indeed a prime path. Very good. Can you, is there one of these columns, or maybe more, where all of them are not prime paths? Yeah, so, so all these guys are not prime paths, right? Are they simple paths? Yeah, they're simple paths, but they ain't prime. Two? Well, look, I mean, AB is an AB, right? BD is in BD, DE, EB. And, and BC. Those are all contained. All contained. Now, how about these ABC, these ones here? Well, is ABC a, a prime path? Is it contained in any other? No, it not. And why isn't it contained? It, intuitively, why isn't it contained in any other? Yeah. How can it be? It comes to the end. It starts at the beginning. Lewis Carroll said it first, right? Start at the beginning, go to the end, and stop. Alice in Wonderland. Maybe it was through the look looking glass. Um, I hashed them to the same bucket. Um, okay, so ABC, is that a prime path? Yes, it's not contained in any other simple path. It's a simple path not contained in any other simple path. Okay. How about ABD? No. Indeed, ABD is, is not a prime path. Why not? Because it's a subpath of ABD. Yes, yeah, it's a subpath of ABD. You can easily extend it mm -hmm. without problem, without adverse consequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good. So. So this is not a legitimate prime path. How about BDE? BDE, what is that begged for? It's extended to B, right? It's a, a subpath of this one, so no. How about DEB? No. Yeah, same thing, right? You could, you could always extend it. Uh, that way, or extend it that way, right? Um, okay, so D, E, B, yeah. Um, so it's actually extended in two directions. Okay, how about uh, E, B, C? What could that be part of? Yeah, D, B, C. It could be extended, sort of, it could be one before it. Which brings up notions in my mind of profile and folks don't have to worry about that that will be another question okay and uh, EBD is that so EBD is that a subpath of something else Uh, and, and also this one, uh, EBTE. Yeah. So no. So we have one of these. It's not. It's just. It's not only those of largest size. There. There can be some earlier because they. They can't go any further. They can't be extended earlier, later, because of a loop or because of a start date, start and end. They can't be extended. These are the prime paths. Okay. The prime paths. And it turns out if we cover in our testing 
these prime paths, we've achieved a very high level of coverage, much higher than merely um, what will be achieved using edge or indeed node coverage. Okay? Um, and I've given some examples there. In fact, one of them may bear resemblance, recognizing the requisite isomorphism between ABCD and N1 through N5. Okay? Um, so the idea here is that we're going to enumerate, going back to our rubric here, we're going to enumerate the things we need to cover. That's what we've just done. We've just enumerated these prime paths. Step one. That's step one here. And that's typically, sometimes that's the most, most challenging thing, in, like this case. In other cases, the most challenging thing is not this. Like for nodes, it's obvious. They spill out of the graph, right? Okay, so we start with that, and then we've got to kind of identify test paths that go from start to finish that will collectively cover these things. In this case, it's, they'll cover the prime paths. Don't get these two confused. We have prime paths that we've identified, just like we can identify the edges and for edge coverage. And then we need to figure out paths from start to finish that will reach all of those things we want to cover. Now these, these paths, T1, T2 here on the left, or, T, or T3, or T4 on the right, those will cover lots of other things besides the prime paths, which we have to cover. But the point is we choose these paths from start to finish such that they will cover the things we want to cover. Here it's prime paths. So all these prime paths, some of them start internally and so on, that's all fine and good. But we're going to, at the end of the day, we're going to need some abstract paths which will cover them, which will go through them and incorporate them at some level. And then we're going to need particular inputs that will exercise those prime paths and yield certain outputs that we can test. Mason said it earlier. Okay. Um, so. We're going to focus right now on testing prime paths or enumerating prime paths in an algorithm. But you should bear in mind that the next step beyond that is finding paths from start to finish that will cover all these. So you notice here on the right, there are these different prime paths which you just identified with clarity worthy of this class. Five of length two. <coughs> And one, G, minus three, right? Mm. Um, but they can be covered by two paths from start to finish that aren't particularly privileged but are important. One path goes like this, and zero and one and two. That's one path from start to finish that we could achieve, presumably, by choosing our inputs carefully, by crafting. What input string do we give to this decode URL algorithm? We could get it to go that way, steer it that way. By contrast, another path that will cover the balance of the prime paths would be one that goes and zero and one and two, two, and zero and one and three and four and one and two. Uh, no, no, it goes around twice. Excuse me. And it needs to go around twice, actually, to cover all of them, to cover these, these paths. It actually goes around this loop twice and then down. And by so doing, it actually covers all the, the remaining prime paths that we identified. And it's a path from start to finish. And achieving that path will require certain inputs that steer it in that direction. So you'll have to cleverly pick out What's an input to the algorithm to get us to our own loop twice? And by so doing, you cover all the prime paths, and thereby, ladies and gentlemen, achieve a high level of coverage indeed. Okay? So don't, don't get confused. These are paths, but these aren't the test paths. These aren't the paths that we're actually using from start to finish. Indeed, many of them start, do not start at the start nor do they end at the end. That's all fine. These are the things we want to cover with our test paths. There may be quite large numbers of these prime paths, 
but we may have just a few test paths that we choose that will cover them all, as long as we cover those prime paths for in good shape. Okay? And so we, we focus on coming up with some test paths in that second step that will cover these prime paths and then some particular inputs, concrete inputs in the third step. Um, I speak of, of this, uh, this flow here. Okay? Students, for some reason in the exam, often I've, uh, seems like two-thirds of the class forgets this. I give fair warning. Um, so, so make note in both the figurative and literal sense. Okay? Um, okay. Um, so our enumeration here what it gained in excitement and lost in lack of systematicity throughout. And in fact, there's an algorithm, as you might suspect, for enumerating these paths. And I alluded to it in commenting on some of the constraints. And I did so to develop that key quantity that is so important for virtuosity in computer science to develop this, this intuition for why things work and, and, um, and, and, and allow for, for extra innovation. So the algorithm may look daunting, but I want to walk you through it. Okay? So we're going to start in this algorithm with all paths of length one. And we're going to go through a successive series of extensions considering longer and longer paths much as I did informally with you on this board. We're going to go from things of length one to two to three to four, and at some point, the jig is up. We can't actually extend it any further um, because we run out of the room of which I spoke. And hopefully, as I explain this to you, none of, none of you will run out of this room in... in, in uh, fear or trepidation. Okay? Um, okay. So we're going to start with paths of like one, and we're going to loop through, and we're going to be considering paths of like one, or piece of one. We're then going to consider piece of two, piece of three, and each iteration through the loop will build up for us within that, that iteration. We're going to accumulate the set of next larger paths that we're going to consider the next go around. So each of these loops will be working with the set of paths of a certain length, piece of I, sort of like one, length of one. And then we're going to be accumulating in that round where we're considering paths of length I, we're going to be sort of gathering together the candidate paths of length I plus one the next larger, the next larger. And at some point, the jig will be up and we won't have any potential paths of the next larger length and, and we'll be done and we'll go home and sleep well and, and, uh, and have our pond paths. So, in this process, we are going to be working with these piece of odds. Okay? Now, the piece of odds are, uh, in general, not going to be restricted to, the, the, they're not going to be the prime paths. Um, they're not necessarily even uh, uh, simple paths. Okay? Um, so, we're going to be accumulating in this PP variable the set of candidates for prime paths, okay? Um, these are simple paths which will be candidates to be prime paths, and at the end we're going to sort out the wheat from the chaff and throw away the ones of PP that are proper subsets that are with, located within others, just as we did here. And four. So we'll discard from PP any, any, any paths that are subsets of others in there. And that will be our prime path. Okay? So P will hold the simple paths here. Um, and um, we'll be 
going through the loop and successively accumulating. Okay, so let's consider an iteration of the loop. An iteration of the loop focuses on paths of a certain length, initially one, and then two, three, and so on. Okay, so we're going to, in this loop for considering a length of i, we're going to be accumulating a, a set of length of i plus one, okay, um, that we need to consider the next go around. But we're also going to be undertaking some other steps, okay? So we're going to take paths in a piece of I and identify these paths. This R set is going to be a set we're going to remove, okay? We're going to remove it from, from the, the set of extensible paths. We're going to, R is going to be a set of paths that cannot be extended. And that set we're going to basically not be able to extend, but they'll be candidates. Those are going to be the simple paths okay, that we're going to be dealing with. Um, that these are going to be a set of simple paths. They can't be extended because either they're a cycle, where the first and the last one are the same, or because they end at a terminal mode. Okay? So R is going to be a set of paths that are either cycles or that that cannot be extended because they're terminal nodes. And this, this set R, which is the subset of P sub I that, that meet one of these two criteria, um, they're all simple paths, and we're going to add them to be candidate prime paths. Okay. That's what PP is. It's a set of simple paths that could be prime paths. After all, all prime paths are simple paths. So it's just a, a distinguished subset. So whatever the set is that we can't extend, because they end at the terminal nodes or they have cycle, the first and the last are the same. We'll sort of save them away in our PP um, because they're simple paths and they might be prime paths. And then we remove them. We, we have this, we, we say, okay, those are the non extensible paths, and we'll consider their complement within B sub i. In other words, EP will be the set of extensible paths, R are the set of paths that are not extensible because they either end at the terminal node or they're cycles. And the rest of P sub i, the rest of the paths of length one that we're considering, those would be the extensible paths, the ones that can be extended. And those paths, ladies and gentlemen, those paths we shall extend. Okay? And that's what this has to do. So basically, for each path that can be extended, Guess what we do? We extend it in the different ways it can be extended, okay? And that gives us, if we have a path of length one, it will give us a path of length two. And if we have a path of length i that we're dealing with, it will give us a path of length i plus one. So this final step, basically is the extension step going from i to i plus 1. And in it, we're extending each of these paths that can be extended by one node. Some of them might go two directions, like b, for example. If, if I had a path a, b, give me two ways b could be extended. It's a path of length of 2. Give me two ways it could be extended to yield a path of length 3. So if we have AB on this diagram, give me two ways it could be extended to yield a path of length 3. Speak use as in a Greek chorus. C or D. Sorry? C or D. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, can you... Uh, Articulate the, the path that would result for the for each of those? A, B, D, or A, B, C. Okay? Those are the two ways that this could be extended. Okay? Um, and in general, we might have multiple ways to, to get to go from length one to length two, or go from length i in general to length i plus one. And that's what this is being considered. For each of these extensible ones, we'll consider all possible extensions of it by a single node, and we'll add them to the sort of set of, 
of has to consider a flank i plus one. Okay, that's what's going on. And then we go on to consider the next guy. So, big picture, what's going on in this loop? Big, big picture is in this loop we're considering things length i. We are separating them, we're sorting them into a set that can't be extended. And that set gets saved away from consideration as a, as a potential prime path. Or those that can't be extended, and they are extended. Those ones, I would argue, cannot be simple paths. Why not? I, I, I said we separate them into those that can't be extended, and those are the ones that are candidates for being prime paths. The other ones are not candidates for being prime paths. Excuse me, simple path, but prime path. The other ones are not. The ones that can be extended cannot be prime paths. Why not? To be conscious. Because it will extend to all kinds. It would be a subset of that. What's in that yeah, it would be a subset of something that's larger than it, something of length i plus 1. So we don't have to consider them as potential prime paths because they're contained in another path. By definition, there's an extension of them. So why do we have to consider that? Um, so, so, ladies and gentlemen, here, that's what this, the body of this loop is doing. It's separating the wheat from the shaft. It's separating out those which can't be extended, which are candidates to be prime paths, from those that can, which won't be prime paths, and which can be extended. Uh, and those, can, those for those, we consider our, our, our paths of length n plus 1, okay, or i plus 1. Now, it's an important, there, there's some parts of this that I'm leaving undercover. For example, how do you know one of those that's lar larger will be a prime path? And therefore, you'll be a subset of another prime path or another another simple path. I'm not, I'm not getting into that um, uh, in a crude form. By a longer time, I might. Another thing is that that I'm brushing under the rug is is this issue of how at the end you discard in a computationally efficient way from PP, which is all all these simple paths, any paths that are proper subsets of others. We did it kind of anecdotally by looking. Turns out that can be done very efficiently. Turns out we can discard ones that are subsets with, as substrings, for example, uh, quite efficiently. So, so uh, this final step after the algorithm is run will be uh, will be fairly uh, straightforward to accomplish in computational practice. Finally, how do we know we're going to arrive at eventually a termination of this algorithm where it will converge, as we say? Into a situation where we have no, we have, we have nothing more to consider at the end. How do we know? How do we know that it's eventually going to get to this point where it is no more possibility of extension? Suppose I guarantee you that the graph under which this is running, on which this is running, on which we consider paths, is finite in. Length. It is a finite number of nodes and edges. <coughs> yes, Mason? Is it because uh, there's only, you know, only exists a, a path of a finite length that isn't a cycle? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then Evan? Yeah, just because as long as you're not considering cycles, as soon as you get to. Exactly. There's, yeah. It's a pigeonhole principle yeah. that, look, if, if we have, you know, n possible things, we have a path of length more than n, there's got to be a repetition in there. It's got to be a cycle, by definition. And, and we do not extend cycles, right? And those will be removed. The cycles will be removed. And um, in other cases, we won't reach a cycle before we reach a terminal node. And remember I argued on this board that once we reach a terminal node, we can't extend it. So we know there's, there's no extension. So either we'll reach the terminal node or we'll reach a cycle, in which case we have no way to extend it further. And so we will run out of paths at a certain length, either because 
they've run into the terminal node or, or because we're, we're going to get cycles of necessity. So this is the algorithm to find prime paths. And it involves critically the sorting of things that can't be extended and those that can be, those that can be extended cannot be prime paths, those that, uh, that can be extended um, uh, are, are ones that, uh, excuse me, those that can be extended cannot be prime paths, those that cannot be extended are candidates for, for being prime paths. They're, they're simple paths and they're simple paths be, because they do not contain any cycles uh, within them, right? Um, remember the definition of a, of a simple path that has no repetition except possibly this case? And, uh, and therefore, they're, they're candidates for being prime paths as well. Okay, so we identify here the set of prime paths. Um, and we then figure out paths from start to finish that will cover all these prime paths, that will reach it through here, and when we undertake these two paths, it'll satisfy prime path coverage, for example, for this graph or that graph. And that will achieve this high level of coverage. Okay? Um, notice that sometimes it requires multiple loops through looping constructs, while loops, for loops, potentially recursion. Um, but that's the nature of it to cover the set of prime paths. And it's one of the reasons that it, for example, is stronger than complete round trip coverage. Okay. Um, so this is, is prime paths. Um, I don't know that we have either time or necessity to cover this algorithm in, in detail, but I would know basically how this extension process works. Here length one. Is it length one paths? Length two paths? Now notice length one paths, some of them are marked in different color, okay? And those colors indicate paths that, that cannot be extended, okay? And there's a, an indication with either a star or an exclamation point, so-called bang, as it's called in the functional programming world, that that indicate um, uh, why it can't be extended. So why can't six be extended? Yeah, it's at the end. It, it can't possibly be extended. So these ones can be extended. Six can't be. So six goes into our candidates for being prime paths, right? It gets separated out into things that are candidates because it can't be extended. It ended in a terminal node here. Okay. All these others can be extended, and what happens to those? Whither do those go? Those, in fact, are extended. So zero turns into zero and one, or zero and four. One here <coughs> turns into two, so one, two, and one, five. So these things are extended. They can be, therefore they're not candidates for being prime paths. So we don't have to worry that we're ignoring them as potential prime paths um, because they, you know, they can be extended and we, we end up extending them. Now some of these cannot be extended that come out at length two. For example, four, four here, caused by the self loop cannot be extended because it has it would have a cycle that would become non viable if we extend it. It's fine if it's four four, because A equals B, the cycle the start and the finish are the same, but we can't take it we can't extend it beyond that. Four six here. Four six cannot be extended why? Why can't four six be extended forward? There's, yeah, there's no forward there, okay? Um, and so it cannot, cannot be extended, okay? Length three here. So the rest, these are extended. You could see them, you could see how they get extended here, right? Zero, four, six, et cetera. Length three 
ah, now we've got a bunch of extensions of this, and this guy can't be extended. This guy's in R, and he's in R because he ends at 6. This one ends at 6. And so those, those two can't be extended. Those go into our candidates for prime paths. The others get extended. And now we're running out of room. <laughs> we don't have much wiggle room left, or, or, or tight of space. So um, uh, these, for example, 2, 3, 1, 5, 6 can be extended. Um, oh, I skipped 4 for space reasons. OK, yeah. So would have, would have winnowed, uh, winnowed down more and so on. And these are the ones that get, uh, start getting accumulated. But I've, I've winnowed out of those that are not subsets of others. It includes some small ones, like 4, 4. Um, but of the ones that have been successively removed, those are the candidates for being prime paths. And we just look for those that are not part of others. Does this make sense? So we're successively extending and removing, removing things that cannot be extended, therefore are candidates for being prime paths, extending things that can be extended, but are therefore not candidates for prime paths, and considering it successively until we run out of wiggle room. Okay? Um, right. Um, and then we find the test paths and the concrete test cases that will test the test paths. Okay? Um, so these might be, for example, the test paths in this case. These will collectively cover all of those. Notice that there's got to be at least one that has a loop with four, for example, here. Um, and it's fine, it includes others, and zero and four and four and six. It has to go from start to finish. These test paths go from start to finish. They have to, to be feasible. But, um, but it, it has to include you know, at least one that has that, etc. And these collectively, just four, cover all of these uh, eight um, different prime paths. Make sense? Prime paths, OK? Um, OK. Um, I think I will, since time uh, has wound down, I'm going to leave it there. I'll, I'll leave you these examples. Um, but hopefully this gives you some feel for prime paths. I want to emphasize again, prime path, this sort of reasoning, can be conducted at the level of a particular algorithm. And I've, I've tended to focus my comments on something like this for concrete sake. But it can also be extended, may I remind you, at a high level in a, in a black box sort of way on something like this, a, a high level description of the system. Okay? Something like, uh, like this about how the system is supposed to work. And you know, I think for your problems, your, um, uh, your projects, application at the level of the system as a whole for many projects tends to be um, even more desirable than, than doing it uh, you know, on algorithms, maybe because there's not detailed algorithms where, where you have this issue of, of testing, where it reaches, et cetera. And where you do have core algorithms, like that algorithm that back in the day when I wore a younger man's shoes and I was junior to even those in the room in age when, when I first started this sort of testing, I, uh, I indeed applied uh, this, these sort of you know, testing methodologies in the context of commercial projects. And I saw others using techniques like this to reach key parts of core algorithms in a systematic way to raise confidence that they're working properly. I think for your systems, I'd be interested, could those be applied at a higher level? for um, reach of the system. Not every one, it makes sense. Um, I'd have to think on the Oculus context whether, whether this would make sense, for example, and similarly in the timeline context. But for many systems, it can be, where these are screens to be reached, or these are elements of functionality. So something to think about. Please keep this algorithm in mind. And please remember the three fundamental stages of coverage testing. Identify the things to be covered, we spent most of our time doing that today with prime paths. 
identify the abstract paths from start to finish that will cover those things and the concrete test cases. Inputs and, as Mason said sagely, outputs that will cover all of those abstract paths, that will realize those abstract paths, steer them in the correct direction. Thank you very much. And thank you for your patience with the computational and AV dysfunction. Okay? Oh, uh...